The World Bank has advised Nigeria and other African countries to focus on digital development as too many of Africa's expanding youth population will be denied the opportunity to live up to their potential with the current incremental pace of economic and social advancement. Uh, this was contained in a new report by the Washington-based bank titled The Digital Economy for Africa Initiative. Now, digital technologies offer an opportunity to unlock new pathways for rapid economic growth, innovation, job creation, and access to services that would have been unimaginable only a decade ago. And that's our focus on the show for today. Welcome to Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Aviation fuel crisis as well as scarcity of PMS in Abuja were just some issues which made headlines this week. Here are other highlights. The NNPC has insisted that it will not fix the price for aviation fuel, but asked airline operators to request import license for the fuel. This was disclosed by the corporation's group managing director, Meli Kiari, in a statement issued by the House of Representatives. According to him, aviation fuel cannot have a fixed price because it is a deregulated product. <music> NNPC has revealed that the recent fuel queues in Abuja is likely caused by low loadouts at depot, which usually happens during long public holidays. The NNPC disclosed this while reacting to reappearing fuel queues in Abuja. The corporation added that it is working with its marketing partners to take necessary measures to ramp up loadouts from all depots. <music> the total net credit by the Nigerian banking sector to the government rose by 2.2 trillion naira in the first quarter ended March 2022 to 16.32 trillion naira. This is according to figures obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria's data on money and credit statistics. According to the data, the net credit to the government rose from 14.12 trillion naira as of the end of January 2022 to 14.72 trillion naira as of the end of February 2022. The figures show that this was an increase from the first quarter figure of 2021. The Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, and the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, have taken their collaboration a notch further. This time, it is by setting up a joint committee of senior and management staff of the two agencies towards the implementation of interagency strategies for enhancing national revenues in the telecommunications sector. The NCC's executive commissioner, stakeholder management, Adeliki Adewolu, inaugurated the 17-member committee on behalf of the Commission's Executive Vice Chairman, Professor Umar Dambata, and the Executive Chairman of the FIRS, Mohamed Nami, the NCC's board in Abuja. Welcome back. Those were the stories that made headlines for this week. Now, according to the World Bank report, access to the internet, however, remains out of reach for most people in the continent, with only 22% reporting having access, uh, as at 2017, that is. It also noted that few governments were investing strategically and systematically in developing digital infrastructure, services, skills, and entrepreneurship. Now, Bukola Oludtaya is the CEO of Stellas Digital Bank. He now joins me to discuss on Nigeria's digital economy with a focus on how these challenges can be channeled into growth. Many thanks for joining us Bukola, on this particular show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it is worrisome that the World Bank has released that particular report and Nigeria is amongst uh, the countries uh, in uh, Africa with a weak digital economy. Why would you say we have that particular challenge? You see, the, um, everything about digital economy seems to be where um, the world is going to or facing right now and it seems to have taken over most industries and that seems to be what is sustaining 
um, the developed world um, economy in, in the light of the fact that the oil is not doing well and so many industries are not doing well. Um, don't forget that the, the oil, people are moving from oil now to green energy, which is solar. Mm -hmm. So many of the traditional industries where most countries earn their income from is already going down. And digital economy seems to be replacing most of them. And that is where they are getting most of their income from. And um, the, the irony is that Africa um, started very late. However, Nigeria is growing, but we started very late, extremely late. In the sense that if you look at the uh, internet penetration in most of this country, for instance, in America is 100 percent. What it means is that every citizen in, in has America access has to access internet. to internet. But however, in Nigeria we are growing. According to statista.com, um, they predicted that Nigeria is um, at 51% internet penetration as at 20. That's about over half of the population. Yeah, over half of the population. Don't forget that I think you, you mentioned that World Bank said it was 22 before. Okay. However, we've grown. We are growing. So it, but there is still a lot of gap to fill. If the likes of America is already at 100%, um, Singapore and Malaysia, that was once a, um, a developing country, is now at 98.5% mm -hmm. of internet um, penetration. So you you will see that Nigeria still has a lot of play, has a long way to to cover, and it's not only that internet penetration falls under infrastructure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that even come up that you know if you look at the ranking compared to most of the developed world that let you know that nigeria is actually falling behind there's also digital competitiveness which also means the ability for of a country to identify a new technology and be able to you know implement or adopt it both in the private sector and also in the government institution we found out that Nigeria is not even among the first 200 uh, countries why that were we ranked. Not, why are we not? Uh, because we, we, we found that Nigeria is slow to developing or embracing new technologies. That's just the reason. So for instance, a new technology comes up now, okay, we say, okay, blockchain, for instance. Mm -hmm. And we found out that blockchain is helping a lot of companies to be able to do good things, great things. Nigeria is usually slow. Is it that we don't have the capacity as a nation or the um, skill? We don't have the personnel, the IT skills of, of the individual that will be able to do this or... Or maybe we just haven't come to the realization. You just talked about blockchain, for yeah. instance. Uh, one would have thought that um, it's something the government would have just, uh, you know, just rolled on completely. But now we have issues of regulation when uh, issues like um, blockchain, cryptocurrency, you know, is talked about. Yeah, it, it, let me let me buttress that. We have four major issues that is um, confronting us as a nation that is really affecting our digital competitiveness. One of it is infrastructure. As I said before, the infrastructure is the ability for the country to be able to have access to internet. The problem, you ask yourself, why are we stuck to just the telecommunication providing the, um, the internet? There are some big giants in America today that if they come into Nigeria, they, and they can provide internet access to almost everybody in, in Nigeria. Why is it difficult for those people to come? The likes of Google provide internet, you know, and many other big firms like that provide um, internet access to, to their citizen. Again, we talked about the digital competitiveness, we are far from it. Secondly, is also the skill, the training. We found out that in Nigeria, even in our curriculum today, even in the universities, um, people who go to school to even study computer science are not taught the entrepreneurship aspect of the digital, the digital aspect. Now, if you look at the top three companies in America, we have Walmart, we have Amazon, and we have Apple. Um, Amazon, Amazon and Apple is basically a tech company. And Amazon um, uh, revenue is about $300 billion. Apple is about $200 billion. We also have Google about $120 billion. Microsoft, $120 billion. Imagine what those countries are actually you know, giving back to the economy in terms of maybe tax, in terms of employment, you know, that they are, the number of people that they are employing. So again, in, the, in, in, our, in our economy, we don't even have a proper system, a curriculum, 
where people are being trained on, di on, on, digital, um, on digital skills, where we are not going to have many people now coming into the entrepreneurship aspect of it. Let me tell you, Apple was not founded by the government. Amazon was not founded by the government. Google was not founded by the government. Microsoft was not founded by, they were founded by, in, by entrepreneurs, just entrepreneurs and see what those companies has become. Why couldn't we uh, emulate such? We found out that even now that we are beginning to have some people going into, we have fintech entrepreneurs, we have some startup, there is still a little bit of, um, there's, the acceptability is still very low. Government is still skeptical. Another major issue is also funding. There is no alternative platform for where these people can get funds from. The only funding that we have to do, we find out that most of these tech startups, they run to foreign VCs, venture capital, or individuals to provide capital. Why? Because there is no, we don't need to go to um, uh, overseas or foreigner to get funds. What is stopping the local investors from investing in the tech startup today. One of the issues is that there is still a lot of you know, apathy on the side of the government. A lot of people will not put their funds in, in, in an institution that government is not supporting. Or maybe the, gov the, institu or the, or the company is not in a stock exchange. You know, when a company is in a stock exchange, they believe that, oh, okay, the company is now probably have a proper governing structure. Mm -hmm. Many people don't want to put their funds in a company that they don't understand the structure, or maybe it's a private structure, or the governance is not that okay. But most tech startup cannot go to the uh, to the uh, to the stock market the now market, because yes. of the compliance cost. Do we mm. have alternative platform where these people can go to to fund? Do we have even VCs in uh, venture capital firm in Nigeria that are putting funds, making funds available for this tech startup? Most of this tech startup will become the likes of Google right. in the future. Okay. You understand? So these are some of the challenges that Nigeria is facing that is actually seriously affecting the growth of um, the, the digital economy, economy in Nigeria. All right, fine. Uh, rightly put, you talked about um, government, some um, apathy and all of that. But let's talk about um, individuals and um, acceptability when it comes to products uh, you know, that come out of this um, uh, digital economy. For instance, you are in the financial world. Uh, you know, there's a whole lot of um, talk about fintechs, financial services and all of that with innovation and products uh, coming up by the day. How would you say Nigerians... <coughs> Uh, have accepted, uh, to what extent have they accepted this new product, for instance, in the financial sector? Yeah, the Nigeria is, the, the, there's a lot of acceptance. That now has to do with penetration rate. The penetration rate in Nigeria, the penetration rate in Nigeria is actually growing. People are accepting because we find out that these days, that that is, especially the youth, they know that is the next oil company. Many use will rather now go into a fintech, a, a fintech or a tech company to go even without you know, a big or fat salary because they know the potential rather than going to other companies, rather than going to maybe the other traditional company. So in Nigeria, there is a lot of acceptability among the youth especially. So people are accepting and they know that, okay, this is the new way to go. And there are a lot of you know, things that need to come up. And one of the when I was talking about the issues that Nigeria is actually facing, and mm -hmm. one major one that I didn't uh, mention is also regulation. Mm -hmm. So regulation is one of the things that will also help to increase the acceptability. Now, when I talk about regulation, it's not about putting down laws that we control or that will force out to everybody on a particular line. I'm talking about a, a system whereby the S s the, the industry will be deregulated. What I mean by deregulate, deregulating is that Nigeria economy, it, and it, it's, a, it's a fallout from the fact that we've been in the military regime for so long. Nigeria economy is almost used to a monopoly system. We will say that, okay, one company should only be a, the switching firm, so the switching company. One, only, one company should only be this, should be that. We at the government also have maybe some, some amount of sh um, shares or investment. Inter investment in. Yeah. I think that is, has actually you know, affected, it has reduced the growth 
slowed us down to a long to a lot. So the 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 regulators need to be able to give more people license to be able to do these things, especially the people who have the knowledge and is and they are able to bring in new technology. And regulation also talks about is also talking about the accessibility of the government to new technologies, innovation and ideas. Are the government willing to accept the innov uh, new innovation and ideas that are coming? I was quite excited um, this week when I heard that in my own industry that the CBN were able to, were able to give one of our partners license to become a switching company. A switching mm -hmm. company, when you want to trans do interbank transfer, the, it used to be NIPS. It, it, used, to, it used to be NIPS, and mm -hmm. the only one we have after NIPS is maybe InterSwitch and all that. Mm -hmm. So we now have more people coming in. And this firm is actually pioneering it with blockchain. And one advantage they're bringing in is the fact that in those days, you don't, you know, we, the banks don't get to get the funds. Maybe you transfer money to a particular bank. The bank don't get the funds mm -hmm. immediately. They get to get maybe a one day or two days after and then leads to maybe some reconciliation issue and all that. And then there's a firm that says that, no, when anybody transfers to any bank, you get your funds immediately. And then before, maybe bank A has to take up the risk of bank B because bank A is already recording that, oh, uh, customer A, so customer, maybe customer Justin has received a fund into his account electronically, but have not received the physical cash. Right. But you can move your money, you understand, which means the bank is typically the one funding it until my own money comes from bank B, which means I'm taking a risk. What about if the money does not come? So we have firms that have that technical or you know, that technical expertise to be able to solve all these you know, issues. Because one of the advantage of um, technology or going digital is the fact that you are, people are going to have better experience. There's going to be speed in processing transactions. In fact, for the country, the country will, the, the, there's going to be what I call um, diversification because the, there are more businesses that will also going to spring up in the fact that if you have, if the country is fully digitized and you have this, this digital economy is growing, more business are going to spring up. And then from the more business that is springing up, people will be employed. So there's a whole lot of um, advantage. There's a whole lot of good things that Nigeria can actually benefit if the government decides to focus and provide enabling environment for the digital economy to grow. Right. So, as it is now, you, you talked about 51% um, um, penetration in terms of um, internet and then connectivity in Nigeria. But let's look at the next um, five years, the short term, uh, specifically in Nigeria. Where do you see the digital economy going and um, what more do we need to make Nigeria like a hub? No, it, it, there is definitely um, positive, there's definitely a positive projection. Because if you look at it, we are now at 51% penetration. Five years ago, we were in here. But we are saying that we are starting slow. So if you are starting slow, it means that the government probably needs to do more than what other countries are doing. Mm. If we compare what other countries are spending into their digital economy to expand it, I'm sure Nigeria is no, cannot even be compared at all. Now we're talking about US that is already at 100%. Let's assume we are even using U.S. Okay, let's even use, let's say, okay, let's assume U.S. is far developed. Okay, let's use Malaysia, let's use Singapore. These countries were, were once developing countries. They are at 98.5% penetration. If we say we want to match them today, what do we do? It means that the government needs to you know, invest a lot in that area. And for you to invest, we need to be able to have people that will tell the government that, okay, you are investing into this economy, but in the next one or two years, we are going to be re you know, reaping the dividend. Mm. So for us to be able to reach where those people are, then we need massive investment. We need foreign, invest foreign partners to come in. So 51% penetration, and we want 100%, it means that we want everybody to have access to internet. Okay. Then there has to be a massive investment in infrastructure. Okay, just before we go on a final note now, you know, there are countries that have moved towards, uh, you know, accepting uh, blockchain cryptocurrency as, uh, you know, legal tender and all of that. Uh, do you see Nigeria getting to that space? And um, if you do, 
when, how soon can we get there with all of the regulations uh, that we really have uh, going on around us right now? As I said before, the, I think the government needs to sit down with the regulators, with the regulators. Already, Nigeria is already feeling the impact of the digital economy. As at 2001, quarter two, the digital economy contributed 17.92 to the GDP of Nigeria, which is the highest. And we are saying we've not even done enough. And we are in a situation whereby all is not contributing as much as it used to. So what do we do? We need to look for, you know, we need to look for alternatives. Mm -hmm. So right now, we need to be able to sit down with the regulator and say, come, we see potential in this area. We see a situation whereby the digital economy is going to be contributing almost 40% to the GDP of, of the country. But how, how is this going to happen? We need a situation whereby the regulators will be able to allow these, um, these ideas to flow. Now we have a situation whereby people are coming up with cryptocurrency and all that. Yes, there is some downside. Technology also has its own downside, True. the truth. It has its own disadvantage. And we need to now look at what are the disadvantages of this. Someone once said, I think it's the vice president that said that you don't throw away the baby with the bath water. With the bath water. What do we need to do? Sit down and look at how can we now you know, control the bad or the negative aspect of this. Nigeria needs it critically in order for us to be able to improve our technology. Let's look at the good side and let's look at how we are going to deal with the other side of it. So we need to sit down with the regulator. If we are unable to do that, it will always come back to a situation whereby the regulators are throwing away the baby with the bathwater and then Nigeria will not be able to benefit or grow in that aspect of it. Yes, the cryptocurrency has its own disadvantage, but it has its own advantage. Digital technology, digital banking, digital media, affiliate marketing, social media, they all have its own advantage. They all have its own advantage. One major advantage to the government is that the government can even increase its, its earning if you are able to you know, be able to bring all these people together and be able to monitor, right. to know the amount of money that is going into this, mm. um, this area. So what the government just needs to do is for us to be able to provide robust um, robust governance, robust uh, regulations, regulations to be able to, you know, allow, you know, take away the bad side and allow the other side of these things to grow right. and then to the benefit of the country. Right, thank you so much indeed. Uh, we have been speaking with Bukola Olutayo. He is the CEO of uh, Stellas uh, Digital Bank. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. You're welcome. All right, as we go, we'll leave you with this one. The Senate, through its Committee on Power, has questioned the Ministry of Power and Power Status under its purview about the reason for the incessant grid collapse in the country. Now, Chairman of the Committee on Power, Senator Gabriel Suzwam, expressed disappointment over the inadequacy of the ministry to address the occurrence. What well, details in this next report? I am Justin Akadonye. I'll see you again next time. The national grid has collapsed for the third time since the year began. The latest, the ministry said, was caused by vandalism on the transmission tower on the Odupani Ikotek Pene 330 kV double circuit transmission line, leading to a loss of about 400 megawatts of generation. The instability of the grid has led to epileptic power supply leaving parts of the country it serves, including Abuja and Lagos without power. Uh, Odupani was shut down in the same, as a result of the same problem, which caused a loss of 575. The total of that is 4,665. <coughs> well, it then means that what TCM we're trying to do is to say that they are not the cause of the system collapse. I'm really finding it difficult to to fight, to see or to hear that we have uh, so many uh, grid failures over a period of some years now. And yet, as policymakers, you didn't sit down to articulate a position that will address these issues. Delegations from the ministry speak. If 
all of a sudden, for instance, there has been a stormy weather, and you know, an appreciable quantum of power is lost due to massive feeder tripping. Feeder tripping when in your home you no longer have supply just because it is threatening to rain. This can create another problem. And when this happens, the frequency will rise and we will have instability issue. First problem on the grid, or one of the problems, vandalization. And we are, we are putting in place a new technology driven surveillance. We have, in fact, actually we have a pilot phase just to start from uh, Lukoja to uh, Abuja to Lukoja uh, 330 KV. That's practical actions on, on what we are doing. The power ministry said the outage had occurred overnight as a result of vandalism. It gave no estimate of when the grid, which says around 117 million people, would be back in full operation.